What's up everybody, welcome back. In this video, we have the state transformations necessary for f of x to become g of x. So we have two scenarios that we're gonna deal with. So starting with number one, how does this function two to the power of two x minus four plus three become this function here, g of x, which is negative three times four to the power of x plus three minus one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rewrite these functions next to each other. So we got two to the power of two x minus four plus three. And then this g of x here is what? Negative three bracket four to the power of x plus three minus one. Now, the first thing I like to do with these types of questions is try to make the basis the same if possible. So this is a base of two here. This is a base of four. But notice here with f of x, we can factor out a two in the exponent. So what I mean by that is we have this base of two and then we factor out a two, we'd be left with x minus two plus three. So this two x minus four in the exponent, I just changed to two bracket x minus two. And then this here, we can rewrite this as two to the power of two, put that in brackets and then put the x minus two on the outside like that. And now two to the power of two is what? It's just four to the power of x minus two plus three. Okay, so this four to the power of x minus two plus three is the same as this two to the power of two x minus four plus three. We just sort of manipulated the function, right? We factor out a two, then two to the power of two, we could put a four there instead, right? So I'm gonna take this here, I'm gonna rewrite it over here. They are the same thing. Okay? So now what I do is I look at all of the transformation values. Once I have the base of the same, I look at the transformation values for f. So what's the a value? What's the k value? What's the c value? What is the d value? You know what? Let's put the d value before the c value. Right, same thing here. What is the A value? What's the K value? What's the D value? What is the C value? So notice here, the A value is one, right? There's like a one in front here. If it's just a base to an exponent, then there's like a one in front, so the A is just one. The K value, there's like a one in front of the X, so that's one as well. The D value is positive two. Remember, it's always the opposite sign. Right, so this x minus two means we shift four to the power of x, the parent function, two to the right. And then the c value is this here, it's just three. Then going to g of x, the a value is this negative three. k value is one as well, there's like a one in front. The d value in this case is negative three, right? This is shifted three to the left. And then the c value is negative one. And then all I um, check is how do I get from this a value of one to this a value of negative three? Well, we're going to have to multiply it by what? Negative three, which means we're gonna have to vertically stretch by three. And we're also multiplying it by negative, right? We're changing the a value, the changing the sign of the a value. So we also have to reflect it in the x axis, right? So this a value of one to this a value of negative three, we have to multiply by negative three, meaning we vertically stretch it by three, we also reflect it in the x axis. If we were just multiplying it by positive three, there would be no reflection. Now, what if we switch these? Like what if this was a is equal to negative three and then we're going to an a value of positive one? Well, that negative three, we'd be multiplying by negative one over three, so we would be vertically compressing it by one over three and then also reflecting it in the x-axis again. All right, so anyway, to take, care of the a, uh, to take care of the a value, those are the two transformations that we have to do. Notice the k values, they are the same. So there's no transformations we have to worry about there. This d value of positive two means what? It's shifted two to the right, but we need it shifted by three to the left. So what are we gonna have to do? To get from here to there, we're gonna have to subtract five, okay? So that means that we're going to have to shift 
five units left, right? To get from that D value of two to get to that D value of negative three, we've got to shift five units to the left. So that's another set of transformations we have to do. And then the C value of three to this C value of negative one, what do we do there? We subtract four. So that means we have to shift four units down, right? Because this was shifted three units up, this was shifted one unit down. So to get from here to there, we have to shift all of that four units down. Now the D and the C value, when you are changing them, you're either adding or subtracting. When you're changing the K value or the A value, you're always multiplying, right? So here we multiplied by negative three. Here we subtracted five, subtracted four. But anyway, those are the four transformations that we have to go through to get f of x to g of x. So first thing you want to do, get the bases the same. List out the a values of the first function, or uh, the transformation values rather, not the a values. Transformation values of the first function, transformation values of the second function, and then see how you get from one to the other. Moving on to the second scenario, we have to transform f of x, which is negative bracket 3 over 4 to the power of negative 2x plus 4. Got to take that transform it to g of x, which is 4 times 16 over 9 to the power of x plus 5. So, like before, first thing you want to do is try to get the bases the same. So this is a base of 3 over 4, this is a base of 16 over 9. So these are tougher to work with than dealing with numbers. Now we're dealing with fractions. So what I suggest we do is we factor out a negative 2 from the top. So we'll be left with x minus 2 up top. And then notice negative 3 or uh, positive 3 over 4 to the power of negative 2. That's what? Flip the fraction, change the exponent to a positive, and then 4 squared, 3 squared, 16 over 9. Right? So 3 over 4 to the power of negative 2 is actually equal to 16 over 9, which is the base of g of x, which is nice. So basically, we can rewrite this here as this negative stays. This would end up being 16 over 9, and this would be x minus 2. Right? So that is f of x there. So now the bases are the same, and now it's easier to compare these. So um, actually, you know what? I'm going to rewrite this function up here, give myself some more room. So we've got a negative in front. We've got 16 over 9 to the power of x minus 2. OK. So let's list out the transformation values for each. So here, a value is negative 1. K value is positive 1. The C value is what? It's like a 0 here, right? So it's 0. And then the D value is uh, positive 2. And then here, a value is 4, right? Positive 4. Uh, the k value is like 1. There's like a 1 in front. C value is 0 as well. There's like a 0 there. And then the d value is um, negative 5, right? The opposite there. So now we just have to see how do we go from these transformation values to these ones. So this a value of negative 1, how do we get to an a value of positive 4? Well, we're going to multiply it by negative. 4, right? So if we multiply this by negative 4, what's the transformations that we're going to have to go through? Well, we're going to have to vertically stretch it by 4, and we're also going to have to reflect it in the x-axis because we are switching the signs. If this was positive 1 and positive 4, we wouldn't be reflecting in the x-axis, or if this was negative 1 and negative 4 already. Right? But because we're switching the sign, we have to include that reflection in x-axis. So vertically stretch it by 4 and reflect it in the x-axis. k value 1, k value 1, there's no transformation there. c value 0, c value 0, no transformation there, we're all good. Here, 2 units to the right, 5 units to the left, which means we have to what? 2 units to the right. To get to 5 units to the left, we have to shift 7 to the left. Uh, 
right? Because if we put this on a number line, if we are two units to the right and we're trying to get five units to the left, we got to shift by seven to the left. So these three transformations we go through. Now, I just noticed that in these examples, the k values were the same always. They were always positive one. But let's say maybe this was, um, I don't know, let's say negative uh, 2 over 3, right? And we had to go to a k value of positive 1. Well, then this, we would have to multiply by what? Negative 3 over 2, right? The reciprocal. Negative 2 over 3 times negative 3 over 2 would give us positive 1. So here, remember the k value we flip, so we would have to horizontally compress this by 2 over 3. Right? We'd have to take this, horizontally compress it by 2 over 3. And then we'd also have to reflect it in the y-axis because we'd be changing the sign. And when the k value changes signs, when it's negative, multiply it by a negative, there's a reflection in the y-axis. A values when they're negative, reflection in the x-axis. K values when they're negative, reflection in the y-axis. So to get to negative 2 over 3 to positive 1, multiply it by negative 3 over 2, which means we horizontally compress it by 2 over 3 and also reflect it in the y-axis. But we didn't have to deal with that here. Usually you're not going to have to deal with the k value in these types of questions, but uh, just in case you do. Usually, it's usually the a value, c value, d value. Those are the main ones, and they're pretty simple to deal with. Just remember, c value, d value, you're always adding or subtracting to get from here to there. A value and k value, you're always, by, uh, you're always multiplying by something to get from here to there. Right? Get the same base, get the transformation values, see how you go from one to the other.